our country is very divided right now. Folks were physically attacking one another. The root causes of division go all the way down into our foundation as a country. Meeting people across the country who have a passion to see our divisions heal, that gives me hope. Don't be afraid to reach out to someone who might not believe exactly like you believe. India podcast and it's a uh, real nice to sit across time zone and to say you know it's morning eight there it's uh, evening eight thirty so how are you guys doing to start with? Doing great, thank you. Thank you doing so much great. for having thank us, Anku. It's a pleasure. Yeah, appreciate so it. To begin asking about reunited states because this uh, name itself uh, gets us a lot of thoughts. It gets us to understand whether you're talking about which aspect of it. Are you just talking about the political aspect? Are you talking about the discriminations we have seen across uh, decades and generations to say? So could you help us understand what really it means to both of you individually and what's the purpose of story that you're trying to tell? So I can, I can start, yeah. So the, 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 the Reunited States is a documentary that's all about everyday Americans trying to bridge the political divide. In the United States, what we've seen is we've seen the Republicans and the Democrats basically fighting very, very, in some cases, violently over the last few years. And the reunited States follows these journeys of everyday Americans. So to me, what, what the reunited States means, it's, it's all about healing and unity and trying to come together. And we see this in the form of these real life people and these real life stories of people that are literally reaching out in some cases across the political aisle, across the spectrum and saying, hey, can we have a conversation? So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to get involved in the project too because I wanted to learn about how one can engage in this kind of behavior of reconciliation, of um, trying to reach out, and also to see just the, the fact that others are doing this in the US and to be inspired by that and to try to take some hope from that. Because right now it's a very, very politically divided atmosphere in this country right now. Raj put it beautifully, it's about people trying to overcome our political divisions, um, but also our racial divides and our historical divides you know, the, what the biggest revelation I've had two on this journey, one is how politics are built upon uh, the foundations of other divides, like the racial divide and socioeconomic divides, the urban and rural divides, you know, gender divisions, and how politics is an apparatus that's often um, built upon some of those other historical divides. And then also the, the other big revelation was that we're all a part of this problem. I think it's very easy to point the finger and say, those people are the ones making this mess. They're the ones that are trying to destroy this country. But the truth is we all are part of this and we all have a role to play in figuring out how to move forward from here. And for me, looking within was as important as being ready to speak outside and externally. And that uh, sort of self-reflection was, was something, you know, examining our own implicit biases uh, and our passions about how we feel with those we disagree is, is, is truly important. So a lot of internalization was required or happened during the process of making it? I mean, did it go like, uh, going the process of making this uh, documentary did require a lot of internalization, as Ben was saying, that it was more about internally understanding than executing it to the outside? Yeah, I would, I would uh, agree with that. And it, it happens in a, in a couple of ways, right? Um, the first is one of the techniques for depolarization that we see the characters go through and that we, we also just came to learn in our research is to examine your own inner biases, right? Because we all have um, inner notions of, you know, this person is different, this person looks different from me, this person believes differently from me. So that is a process of internalization is to really look inside yourself and to see, hey, what are my biases and how can I change it? And then I think more, more broadly, just the, the, the project itself, I think at least forced me to realize that there are things that I can do, 
right? I can have conversations. I can go out and meet people. I can engage in certain techniques and practices when I'm having these conversations. So from that point of view, it was uh, internalization for, for myself because it made me realize that I can be very much a part of the solution okay. uh, because it's always like this other this this other thing, right? It's like, oh, you know, these people are bad and these other people are fighting. A lot of judgment flows through, yes. Yeah, and you never think about what can you yourself personally do. So that for me was the beauty of this film is that it's it's not targeted towards the politicians. It's not targeted towards, you know, community leader, leaders. It's targeted towards everyday people like you and I, right? And, and the other nice thing that's very universal about this film and why we want to bring it to international audiences is polarization is happening around the world. It's happening in different countries around the world. We see it happening um, all, all across the oceans. And these techniques are universal, right? It's all about coming together, having a conversation, opening your mind, opening your heart. And that's why we're so excited to bring it to audiences around the world. You know, there you picked it up, Raj. I wanted to ask both of you this thing that when you're wanting to bring it in India also, uh, you might find a lot of relevance but how would you convince the audience here? Because somewhere the demographic of this country and states are quite different. Although we also have polarized politics in India, we do have two strong parties always betting against each other. But I think a lot has been identified in your uh, making about independent candidates. So how, uh, how do you think you will draw a relevance of the documentary in this country as well? Ben, if you'd like to give your uh, thoughts around that. that. Yeah, I mean... At first and foremost, it's a human story. You know, there's there's obviously a lot of these philosophical ideas, but we decided pretty early on uh, in the process not to go into the philosophy of politics or to make it too academic, that it's really got to be this emotional, visceral story. And so when you're watching a story of someone like Susan Bro, who's lost her, di her daughter to violence, um, you know, the story of a mother losing a child, which is so painful is universal. And that's something that we can all connect to. And so, you know, the film itself is not so much a academic exercise. It's, you know, it's really looking at um, this emotional arc. And so we hope that's one thing that will make it universal. But yeah, you talk about the diversity. There's a lot of similarities between India and the US. I mean, India is the largest democracy in the world and the, it's incredibly diverse and diversity has typically been a strength. I mean, these are all descriptions that we can use to talk about the US as well. And so, you know, and then the two major parties that have been fighting and battling. Um, and, and really, you know, when we talk about these issues about trying to find common ground, it's not, you know, some fantasy or some naive like suggestion of we all need to move to the center. You know, you can really believe strongly in your own political view it, it, and still advocate for a better way of discussing with each other. It, because the problem now, we've always had sharp political disagreements, but the problem now is we're dehumanizing those we disagree with. We're, we're actually thinking they're trying to destroy our country and destroy our way of life. And that's incredibly dangerous because historically dehumanization precedes violence. And we're starting to see that now. There's more and more political violence. And so it's really saying we need to see the humanity in each other. Even if we disagree, we don't need to get along, but we at least have to tolerate each other and respect each other. Otherwise, you know, we start, we start to face some pretty dangerous outcomes. That's a strong message. And uh, Raj, when you talk about India also, when it comes here, uh, it will be two things. One, understanding the politics in US that you're trying to show and uh, blur the gap between, because we have always seen US politics like Republic and Democratic. So trying to understand the third aspect can be difficult. Uh, how do you think uh, the audience would connect to it, according to you, Raj, like in India particularly? Do you think they will understand what you guys are trying to bring out uh, through this documentary? Because it has real anecdotes. It's not fiction that way. It's a documentary. I, I think so. And, you know, one of, the, one of the decisions that Ben made, one of the creative choices that he made early on, which uh, I think has been very smart and that it's made the film universal, is, is we, we never actually define what a Republican is or what a Democrat is. We, we basically position at the start of the film, there are these two factions that are, that are warring. And that, that theme of like me versus you or us versus them or these two camps versus each other, that is a universal theme. So nowhere in the film do we say, oh, you know, this is a, a fight of Republicans versus Democrats. Here's what a Republican is, here's what a Democrat is. We don't even define what the, what the beliefs are. Uh, we just say, hey, look, like th there is this problem of division 
and here's what people are doing to overcome this problem. So I'm, I'm sure that in countries like India or, or other countries like Australia, where, where polarization is an increasing problem, there are human stories like this, where people are reaching out and trying to have a conversation. So again, I think because of the way that the film, the film would have been a lot less relevant had we taken that academic or that political approach where we'd said, look, you know, here's the history of the Democrats. You know, in the 1800s, this is what the, we, we stayed away from that entirely. And we said, look, people are having, people are fighting. And let's, let's now take a look at what people are doing to try to overcome the division. So we, we leave it at that layer of division. Of self-interpretation there. Yeah. So I think that makes it universal. And I, I hope Indian audiences will, 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 will connect with that. And, and the greater thing is that it's coming around a time when we have uh, five state elections happening in the country. So it's almost uh, coming around a time when people are in this whole mood to understand how politics plays a role in their lives. You know, we are going through that phase in the coming month and your film may just bring out that sentimental uh, value in people to understand it better. Uh, it's, it's a real good topic though. Ben, I want to come to you with one question that I think we as a team wanted to ask you also is, how do you choose your subjects? Your subjects always have some core uh, issue that's ongoing and that needs address, uh, needs to be addressed. What is, what is that uh, leads you to choose your project? If you can help us understand. We've seen Waterbone, if I'm right, where Shabana Azmi was also there. Uh, hmm. yeah. so can you share your secret and spill your beans here? Yeah, sure. I, you know, I've, I've firmly come to the idea that we don't choose our stories, our stories choose us. That we're, if we're truly open and allowing, you know, ourselves to be in, in touch with our creativity, it, it's what excites me the most, what makes me vibrate the most, where I wake up thinking about something and I go to bed thinking about something that I can't stop, you know, uh, understanding or the, the passion can't stop. And that's something that is really important because if it comes from your mind where you're like, oh, what's commercial or what do I think will work? Uh, you know, it's not coming from a pure place of moving you. And for me, I really need something to inspire me so much that I can't not do it because otherwise, what's the point? And it's an incredibly hard process, you know, making, making a film. It's also an incredibly unpredictable business and good movies, you know, fail, bad movies, make money. Like no one really knows what works. So you might as well do what you love and tell the stories that matter to you. And for me, it's kind of come around to this idea of urgent cinema. Like what are the ideas that are on the tip of our tongue that we don't know how to articulate that will help us understand our changing world better. And cinema is this incredibly powerful tool. It, it allows you to walk in someone else's shoes for 90 minutes. You know, it can allow you to change the way you see yourself and see the world, see the, the human condition. It's a front row experience to someone else's life. And that's really, really powerful and often not used to its full potential. Of course, it's got to be entertaining. Like, I'm not trying to be on some soapbox and say, like, you know, let's change the world with films. But it is, it's, it's all of the mediums wrapped into one. It's theater, photography, music, uh, you know, literature, performance. And, sensitive, and these are sensitive issues as well. So you have to be factually yes. correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and just like, you know, I, I'm more concerned with how much you, we can make you feel. Like in this case, the reunited states is 90 minutes of hope and love. And we don't say that kind of lightly, the very dark time that we're in. We're still in the midst of a pandemic. The economy is still in shambles. We're in political divisiveness. Like this, these are really difficult times. And so, you know, the fact that we are separated from each other in physical distance and we can't see people we love and our family members and we can't meet in public with friends, that has a huge psychological effect on us. We're social creatures. We, we need each other, like we need food and water. And so we wanted this film to have a healing effect to say, look, the news tells you how bad it is out there, but the news is also a part of the problem. Like they're amplifying the worst 5% of humanity because it sells. What about the other 95% of humanity? And that's what we wanted to try and shine a light on is just everyday heroes that are doing this work. We've covered so many I will, topics. I will, say, yes. I, I will say that one of the reasons why I wanted to do this film is because of the very wide variety of subjects that Ben has tackled so effectively in his body of work, right? We saw, we saw him deal with the issues of, uh, in, in the feature narrative form of a waterborne virus and waterborne. And then Ben and I actually started uh, talking when he was doing Ashram, right? Ashram was... Yes 
directed by Ben, produced by Guni that had Radha Gopte in it and Cal Penn in it. And that was all about the this, this spiritual journey of someone who came from America to India. And then Ben directed uh, a film called Watchlist, which was all about the drug wars in the Philippines. So, uh, so having seen Ben tackle these very, very hard hitting, dark, gritty subjects um, and do it so beautifully and do it so eloquently, I just knew that I had to work with him. So I never thought that I would produce, invest in, a, a documentary about politics. But when Ben brought it to me, I was like, I want to do whatever it is that you're doing next, just because I wanted to work with him. So I think it's, uh, it's a testament to how he's handled some of these very difficult subjects in the past. And I knew that he would handle this one very eloquently also. Can we say, Ben, you enjoy taking these uh, subjects, which can also draw a lot of controversy and flack on you. I mean, are you guys scared anytime that we are touching upon topics which has a lot of political control on? And you're just going to nudge that in your uh, in your creative manner. But I don't know. I, I really wish no one takes the negative part. But how do you take how do you prepare yourself for releasing such a thing, uh, such a topic and issues uh, with so much ease and you're smiling and you're all there that, OK, we're going to talk about this. Well, because it's it matters. It, it's important enough to like I, I think we have gotten a lot of pushback. The reason I'm smiling is because it's true like this film we didn't think that saying, hey, we should find a way to listen to each other was controversial, but it's we've gotten blowback from both the left and the right. There's a lot of controversy. We've been, you know, uh, ripped to shreds by people saying like, oh, this is naive, like, how, you know, oh, this is disingenuous. And, and you know, what we can realize is if we're upsetting both sides, we're probably doing something right. And so it hasn't uh, affected us because and this is, this is what it comes back to saying, you know, do you believe in the work that you're doing? Like, I think earlier in my career, I, there were times where I would look at my work and say, oh, like, you know, this didn't come together or I wish I had, you know, but, and, and now I'm at the point where I feel every frame that we put out there is something that I'm proud of and stand by. And so it doesn't affect me as much when someone else doesn't respond to it because I know I did my very best and that I'm proud of the work. And so, and in the end, during this time, like we're trying to give people hope. And if people, you know, have a problem with that, that's not something that says about what we're doing. It's about where they're at in their journey. And so I, you know, I told Raj this early on, I was like, whatever happens with this film, I'm just so proud that we're trying to send this message in this time because not many people are saying this. From the producing point of view, just, it was a pretty big undertaking, right? We, Ben and the team shot in more than, well, been like 10 states, 15 states. And every single place you went to, we typically had a different director of photography. So that we had more than a dozen different directors of photography. We shot all across the United States. Uh, the whole film was independently financed. Um, a lot of the traditional outlets that um, finance documentaries turned us down early on. Uh, later on, in, later on in our journey, after we we had a rough cut uh, and people saw the value of what we were trying to do, we we did get some some uh, financial backing from some larger institutions. But early on, it was a very difficult journey. You know, we all we all worked for little to no pay, um, so it was it was it was a tough project, right? Because it was a, it was a labor of love. We really believed in what we were doing, uh, but we didn't necessarily have the like financial backing. Um, but I think. The nice thing is because we did have some some independent financing and because Ben and I and the, the entire team worked so hard on the screen, it looks like a very large scale production. But behind the scenes, all of the sweat and the blood and the tears that went into it, um, that was a pretty challenging process. And then I think just getting the film out, right? So eventually the film did end up going to many, many different great festivals. You know, it was the yes, opening night that. film at CineQuest and it, and, it, and it won several awards and it's eventually been, been released widely on all these platforms. Um, so, so, so that's been great. But again, the film had to go through many different iterations um, and just, just the, the process of getting it out and the process of trying to convince people that, look, this is not just another political documentary because there was a lot of political documentaries that came out last year analyzing, you know, gerrymandering or analyzing the history of voter fraud or whatever. This is a very human aspect. It's a very unique take on it. But because of the title and because of the political space, there's a lot of noise, right? It was an election year and people were just like inundated with like political messaging. So just getting that point across and showing people and telling them, look, this is a human story. That took a little bit of effort, but luckily we were able to work with a, with a, with a great PR team and, 
and with a great social media team to, to get that message across. But we had to be very deliberate. We had to be very strategic about it. So it just took a lot of work and time and effort, but I think it was worth it in the end. You know, I guess the biggest is just the actual process of making a documentary is so different than fiction. Like in fiction, yeah. you write a script and then you go shoot the film. And in documentary, you shoot the film and then you try and write the script out of what you got, which was yeah. a huge exercise in letting go of trying to control everything and just, you know, be a fly on the wall and allow things to happen. Yeah. As a filmmaker, it's you're, 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 you're trying to direct all the time. And so to actually stop doing that was like a huge uh, learning curve. And edit was, you know, extremely long. And, and there were times where I was like, you know, I think I've failed. Like, I, you know, I haven't done a good job here. But, you know, you talk about the emotional challenges. Um, there was a day, you know, uh, when we went to the Mexican border and crossed in and, and spoke to, uh, you know, refugees seeking asylum in the U.S. And they were telling their stories. You know, we had a translator of just, you know, their children being shot to death by gangs and like having to walk, you know, 1500 miles. And I did start crying because I just was so shattered and, you know, like to hear this, this story and, and also to feel the responsibility from people trusting us with their stories. Like Susan Bro, you know, it's a deeply personal loss to, to lose a child to hate uh, and, and, to know that how we portray the story is with the most sensitivity. Like I never want our work to inflict trauma on either the people that are going through it in front of the camera or the audience. And so knowing that line of how to push for a truth that will help the rest of us heal without harming the person that you're talking to is a very delicate act. And so um, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. Uh, it'll be nice with someone who puts in so much of their heart and soul into bringing out something to really work on uh, issues that can really find, you know, that's another way of peacemaking some way. And uh, one message that you have to say to the audience, you've said it all though, that you would like uh, us to also take it through, that you want people to understand this documentary, like any last uh, message or the word that thought you want to leave all of us with so that we understand it the way you want to tell us the story. I would say, I would say have a conversation with someone who, who, thinks differently from you, who believes differently from you, and just listen with an open heart. We're all humans. We all need each other, even if you believe something very differently than what I believe. So, I, so that would be what, what I would ask is just have a conversation with someone who believes differently than you. Yeah. And I, to that same token, I would say our website, reunitedstates.tv, it's very relevant for anyone in the world of how to talk to family members, how to talk to friends about politics and difficult things. And one of the main tenets is go into a conversation, not trying to change someone's mind. Don't try and win an argument. Go in trying to understand where they're coming from. So use curiosity to ask questions rather than bludgeon them with facts or say, you know, but don't you want to see it my way? And so that's one of the biggest things we would say. And we're excited to, to bring the film there in the coming months. And thanks so much for this thoughtful conversation. A lovely, lovely moment for us, and we're really sure it's going to really rake up. As I told Raj, it is the right time for Indians to watch this up. We are in that mode to understand a little more how we should be together. So thank you. Definitely. And we'll stay in touch on our on our future projects, and we'd love to do that.